So in this section, let's actually try to build something that we could animate procedurally and have some fun with. So I'm just going to start off with a plane. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and build a rolling wave in a procedural fashion. So I'm just going to grab this and um, duplicate this a few times, just so we have a base mesh and merge all this stuff together. There we go. And now um, we could subdivide this a whole bunch of times, just so we have something to start working with. So the idea is just to have a rolling wave going from left to right. And I'm sure you might think, why not just use something like MantaFlow? Well, sometimes you just need something uh, that's simple to control. And while MantaFlow is great, uh, simulating can take quite some time. And you'll see in setting this up, we can actually do this quite quickly and have a lot of fun while doing so, um, which is also very important, obviously. So let's start with the basics. Again, we're going to bring in our old friend, uh, the Vertex Weight Edit and add in an empty mask here and set it up so we have a gradient in our mesh. So grab a mask, create a new texture, and let's call this wave uh, base. And for this, we're gonna use a blend texture. And just to preview what's going on, again, I'm gonna throw in a displace because um, we're gonna use an object to control this so we can actually see what we're doing and set this to mask. And actually, rather than mask, I might call this wave just for consistency. And we'll set this to wave and wave. There we go. So now let's add in an empty object. And this is going to be our wave controller. So I'm going to call this control.wave. And we're going to call the plane mesh.ocean. Why not? There we go. So um, let's grab this. And let's make sure our uh, vertex weight is being controlled by an object. And we're going to do that. And it's going to stay the same, obviously, because the object is in the same place. And as we move it around now, you'll see um, we've got something moving from left to right. Now, what I want to do is actually make this one peak. So we're going to go into our texture, go into the colors. And in the color ramp, we're just going to set it up to be a linear color ramp from left to right. Now. You could, if you wanted to, sort of push this in one direction or push this in the other direction. But the thing is, um, we're actually going to use a different setup to shape the wave a little bit more rather than using this one. So I want to avoid having that in there for now. Now, we could change this to maybe something like ease so we get a little bit of a nicer fall off. And um, I'm going to set this to smooth shading as well, just so we have something a bit better to work with. And let's say that's the start of our wave. Now, it doesn't really look like much of a wave yet, but that's okay. Because the second part of this is that we're actually going to shape this in an interesting way. And the way I'm going to do this, and I want this wave, maybe let's just leave it at one unit. I don't want it to be too high. I just want it to give the idea of, uh, of a wave. And if I just go into front view, um, we can't really see our, our texture or rather our mesh over here. But we need to figure out a way to shape this. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a lattice. There we go. And we're going to use this lattice to um, shape the wave as it moves along. Now, what we need to do, I know this is one, um, actually, I know this is uh, one unit high. So I'm going to move the lattice up. There we go. And you need to scale this at object level to fit it first. Oh, there we go. And then before you do any manipulations, you just kind of make, sh make sure that within object level scaling, this entire thing fits within the lattice. So let's scale this out a little bit more, maybe something like this, and just up a little bit. That way we have a bit more space to play with. So now that that's set up, we can go back to our ocean mesh, and we can add in a lattice modifier. There we go. And we can grab the lattice that, we're, um, that we've just created. Now I'm going to call this lat dot wave and the way a lattice works is basically whenever you um, put a lattice modifier on the mesh that you want to manipulate you can then use the lattice to reshape it in any way you want and the cool thing about the lattice is you can define the amount of points that you want um, going up or down and now because this modifier is already set up uh, what we can do Let's see if we can't somehow see the final result a little bit better. There we go. So now we can actually see our mesh as well. 
Now, if we go into edit mode on the lattice, we can now grab some of these parts and I'm setting this to um, my front view and just dragging along these points. So I'm grabbing both sides. And as you can see, I can start shaping this mesh in a way that I want this wave to kind of give it a, a bit of more of a wave shape. And just by grabbing these points, you can really manipulate the way this looks. And I'm going to move this one on the X axis. And again, we're just looking for a basic shape. Um, like most of the examples in this uh, tutorial or training series, I'm just showing you the basics. Um, so you can go in and fine tune wherever you want to. So maybe something like this it's going to look pretty good. There we go. It's a very basic wave shape, but it works. And now the cool thing is if we parent this lattice to our wave controller, we can now um, see it's in there. We can now actually move this around and the wave will come with it. Now we want to have a little bit more variation in this, obviously, because it doesn't, you know, it looks okay, but we want it to be a bit more, um, I guess, a bit more dynamic as well. So because we've set this up with the vertex group, what we can do is within our displace, we can either throw in a texture. This is probably the simplest way to do it. Let's see, um, we're going to call this wave breaks. I'm going to turn off the color ramp. I'm going to set this to something like uh, distorted noise, for example. And I'm really going to crank up the brightness and the contrast, or actually bring the contrast down a little bit. And you can see just by doing that, we get uh, a bit more of a wavy shape. Now, the cool thing is because this is based on um, the, because the displace is actually being projected based on the object location, when we move this wave controller around, I'll move it in the right direction, you'll actually see the wave sort of breaking up a little bit. And that's kind of where the fun starts because we can now just add in a subdivision surface just to get a little bit um, more subdivided and make it look a little bit better. And if you wanted to, you could get super advanced with this. And in the lattice, you could add maybe more subdivisions. And let's see, I actually don't want them in U, but I want them in V. And you could grab one and push it up. Go, maybe bring this one, push it down a little bit. And now you've got a wave that could even change shape um, as we can have shape keys within the lattice itself. So we grab a shape key here uh, called basis and have another key, grab this part, maybe move this back, maybe move this one up a little bit and maybe move this one up a little bit as well. There we go. Now we could even have the wave change shape as it moves along. So let's set that up. Let's grab our wave controller, move it over on the x-axis. And let's set a keyframe on the x-axis as well. So I'm just going to insert a single keyframe, bring up a timeline here. we go and at frame let's say frame 300 let's bring this up towards the end Put another keyframe and what we want to do on the lattice as well we want to hit I to set a keyframe here and then set this to one at the end we go and hit I again and now you can see as we play this and let me just set the playback to frame dropping we can actually have a rolling wave that we've set up completely procedurally, and you can see it changes shape over time. You can have as many of these shape keys as you want, but I want to keep this uh, fairly simple so it stays somewhat performant. If I turn off the um, subdivision surface, we'll get pretty much real-time uh, real visualization. You can see this works quite well. Now the final step to make this look a little bit more convincing is to actually add an ocean modifier. There we go. And rather than setting this to generate, we're just going to set it to displace. And we're going to have to fiddle with the settings a little bit. Um, let's bring down the scale maybe and the spatial size. And then maybe the size itself as well. And bring that up. And the more um, subdivisions we'll have, the better this will look. So let's crank up the resolution here to maybe something like 15. And now for the final thing we want to do is see what happens. There we go. We've got the scale here. And as we saw before, um, what we could do is just type in hashtag frame divided by something like 50. Let's see how that looks. And now we've got a completely procedural wave set up. 
And of course, this isn't perfect. Like I said, um, this is a very, very basic setup, but this is just to, to show you that you don't always have to resort to simulating things or doing other things. Um, if you just need a very simple animation and you need some control over how this wave looks, this will work just fine. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's very flexible. It's very extensible. You could always add more stuff into this and we've added shape keys in now, so I'm not going to mess too much with the base shape. We could control this in as many ways as you need it to, and it will look fine and it will run pretty quick. And again, if you want more um, detail, all you need to do is just add in a little bit more viewport subdivisions and render subdivisions up the resolution here. And you'll get a lot more resolution. It'll be a little bit slower, but it'll still work just fine. And to keep things quick, you could always just set it to zero in the viewport so you can look at it near real time and uh, not have to worry about it. So this is a very, very quick way to, again, um, use modifiers for procedural animation. And you can see it didn't take me very long to set this up at all. Um, and it looks pretty decent. Again, if I would use this as a final sort of a final thing, I would probably go in and tweak it a little bit more, maybe add in a little bit more details, add a little bit more um, animation to the lattice and things like that. But for quick setup, this is, uh, this is quite nice and still quite fast. So I hope you enjoyed this chapter and uh, let's move on to the next one.